and teamwork in the light of education and learning since Monday, that is September 6, 2021. Today, our discussions involve levels of learning by Professor S. L. Patish Kumar, along with ethical and value based leadership by Professor P. K. Singla. Both the sessions by our esteemed speakers attracted keen interest of the participants and interaction. Now, before we begin with our discussion, I take great, great pride and honor to let you know that we are being joined by our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central University of Haryana, Professor Tankeshwar Kumar. Sir, on the participants' behalf, I request your good self to take over the mic and obl oblige us with a few words. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Vikas, and uh, thank you, Consul Ji. You know, you are organizing this uh, faculty development program, and uh, today we are having the uh, Vice Chancellor of the Petroleum University. Uh, Dr. Sunil Raiji, and uh, you know, he's a uh, uh, vice chancellor of the university, and uh, really thankful, sir, you have accepted our invitation. And uh, because uh, this program is uh, on a very important topic, you know, the leadership and the teamwork, and uh, that is sometimes I uh, find it is missing in many places uh, because you require the leadership at every uh, it's not only one organization require a good leadership at every point. Uh, not every point, but every organization should have good leaders uh, to run the organization, whether it is a, a political system or whatever the system it is. And we really need good leaders. And obviously, uh, the mantra of today's life is uh, the teamwork. And uh, that's what they are doing at present. And you know, you are organizing this uh, six-day program, and this is uh, funded by AICT under the ATEL uh, program. And uh, I hope that you know this FDP program. When you are invited, people like uh, Sunil Raiji and other uh, other, you know, I have seen the other list of the people who have invited you. Know, uh, Ragnar, another vice chancellor, and uh, I hope that our uh, faculty members will be able to learn the importance of uh, this, uh, at least the teamwork and the leadership, because you never know who will be the leader one day. Every day, every teacher is a leader because he has to uh, work like leader when he is in the class. Right? In the class, he is work like a leader. He is his own subject. He was curriculum and all that, that is also a leadership, you know, so that is also important uh, that we learn. I am really thankful to uh, Professor Sunil Raiji for accepting the invitation. We would like to listen to him uh, this because this session belongs to him. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. We are really lucky we could have with you us today. Now, it is also my greatest pleasure to let you know that we have with us Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, UPES Dehradun, Dr. Sunil Rai with us. We are really blessed that he spared his valuable time and let us borrow some of his time of his busy schedule. Now, without further ado, I would request Ms. Priyanka, Research Scholar, Department of Civil Engineering, to introduce us to our esteemed speaker and invite him. Thank you. Thank you very much. So good afternoon all. It's an honor to have a chance to introduce today's distinguished speaker, Dr. Sunil Roy, the Vice Chancellor of University of Petroleum Energy Studies, Dharadun. In his illustrious career in the world of academia, Dr. Sunil Roy sir has come to be known for designing and implementing plans that transform organization. He has led them in various capacities as Pro VC in MIT Arts, Design and Technological University, Pune, Director on Board of Maharashtra Dean and Chairperson. He is also a defense veteran and managed ship and technological establishments of Indian Navy. He was a commission officer in Indian Navy for 21 years and served on ships like INS Vikram, Nilgiri, etc. 
Dr. Sunil Rai holds a PhD in Business Continuity Management from BITS Pilani, MTech in Computer Science Engineering from IIT Mumbai, MBA with HR Specialization from IGNO, and also hold a Master's in Marine Engineering from Naval College of Engineering, Lonavla, and BSc Honor from GNU. This proves that he is an astute acad academician and has been rated as best faculty for eight years in succession. As sir's achievement cannot be summarized in a short spell, so now I would request Ms. Dr. Sunil Roy, sir, to come forward and grace the occasion. Welcome you, sir. Thank you very much. At the outset, uh, I would express my sincere thanks to the Central University of Haryana and my colleague and senior, uh, Dr. Tankeshwar, sir, uh, for giving me this opportunity and, of course, the coordinator, Amit, and all the other uh, people who have made this possibly. I would, first, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Second one, I would like to congratulate you to continue the good work in developing the most important resource of the country, which is the faculty, uh, uh, for which you are contributing. So my many congratulations for you to put together this nice program. I was going through the details. And as uh, VC sir said about it, Tankesha sir, that we have got a good layout of the speakers who will be sharing their experiences and are sharing their experiences. So it's an enriching experience to all the participants. And so it is to all of us who participate maybe in the capacity of speaker as I am fortunate to be one today. So thank you very much and many congratulations for uh, including me in uh, this great initiative. Uh, I was of course introduced uh, by Priyanka uh, very humbly. Uh, I would uh, accept that a lot of it would be, it's a journey uh, in two parts. One first part was with the Indian Navy when I retired as a commander. And I was a naval engineer and uh, specializing in steam turbines, gas turbines, ships, uh, just to keep the interest going. You know, you all heard about the old Vikrant. Now we are going to have a new Vikrant created by us. Uh, Nilgiri, Shakti, uh, Coast Guard ship called Veera, Nirdeshak. So, so many ships I served, fortunately. I've been involved in several projects uh, for the Navy, uh, including construction of civil of dry dock or uh, the naval dockyard at Mumbai. I had been actually heading a lot of uh, quality improvement projects such as moving the Navy from planned preventive maintenance to uh, condition-based uh, maintenance systems, thereby improving efficiency of uh, uh, maintenance and also ensuring a bigger uptime rate to keep the force levels higher to the threat perceptions that the nation has to meet. Uh, I had, of course, been specializing towards the end in enterprise solutions and bringing about change management in organizations. Uh, I'm just, there's a reason why I'm just trying to amplify on what Priyanka said. And in the second part, I started my journey after a brief stint in corporate for two years as CIO of Goa Shipyard uh, at uh, SP Jain Institute of Management in Mumbai, where I eventually was fortunate to become the director. And then... The first phase, I was with the management schools at uh, Narsi Monji at Goa Institute of Management, and then God gave me opportunity to serve in the university system. This is my third university as vice chancellor. I was pro vice chancellor at Nimrana, vice chancellor at Kaziranga University in Assam, a vice chancellor at MIT Arts Design Technology University in Pune, and now serving here as vice chancellor at UPS. The purpose of sharing all this was that I have accrued some uh, experiences in this journey about leadership. And I agree no less when Tankeshwar Ji says that every person is a leader and faculty definitely are leaders. You know, For one, that they are leading the learning process. The second one is that they are creating leaders. You know, and the many times we teachers keep on uh, jokingly mention to each other that our students earn three times more than us. They start earning double than us as soon as they walk out of our campus. And uh, so it's such a great pride, you know, when you create such leaders who are uh, contributing to the building of society and nation, it's a great feeling. To me, in my experiences, I think leadership, I always uh, try and control my thoughts in three sections. The first section that I will talk about is what to me, uh, what is leadership really? You know, and what what defines leaders, not really what depicts leadership is the correct thing. 
Second one is I will talk in general about the academic leadership, what it could be. And third one is how the academic leadership is at work. So towards the first one in leadership, uh, to me, I think to me the main purpose of a leader is to create another leader. Ever since you join, and I think great companies like GE, DuPont, and of course here in the Indian Navy where I was very fortunate to serve, right from the time that we joined, I joined of course as a sub-lieutenant many, many years back, all the seniors from day one start uh, working on us to build leaders, you know, to build the future admirals when I was in the Navy, or the future Commodores and, uh, you know, ranks like that. And uh, in the corporate also, right from the day one, I, I was reading somewhere that Jack Welch was actually right from day one picked up that one day he will lead GE. So it, leadership is a process. So there are three things uh, which to me in this leadership journey define this particular journey is one is belief, second one is determination, and third one is inclusivity. So that's the first one, the belief. Belief, again, the first and foremost thing, the belief that the leader should have is belief in the belief in the proposition. What is it that you are doing? You must believe in it. And at whatever level, wherever you are. I am today HOD of civil engineering. I should believe about the purpose that this civil engineering department is going to create. I am a leader. I am a business unit head in an IT company. Then I should be having full belief in the, in the purpose that uh, the proposition that uh, uh, this particular department is giving. For example, I am in a uh, in a service industry and I am in a maintenance company and I am a business unit head of a particular vertical, let us say washing machines. Then I should have a firm belief the proposition that we say that my washing machine is giving you continued performance with 98% uptime rate. If as a leader you don't believe nothing down below will actually happen in that. It all starts with the leader. You know, when At Nirbharta Modi ji believes, it starts percolating down. I'm just citing it as an example. So we, we as teachers are totally apolitical, you know. So, of course, but we like the thing that he believes in it very strongly and the reason why the whole nation is gradually settling to it in various fields, whether it is in manufacturing, whether it is in healthcare. Now, look at this belief of At Nirbharta how nicely it has panned out in terms of uh, the health care that we could provide to the nation. A nation which was not considered in the top 50 as far as the healthcare infrastructure was concerned is amongst the top three countries who have managed the pandemic so well. Now this is because that we believe that the proposition is that we will do it all ourselves. We will do it with our own methods. You know, we will not worry about other things, about whether remdesivir is there or not. We will strongly believe that we will follow good health routine. Routine. We will have all the things that our ancestors taught us, the kada that you have or the breathing exercise you have. So that's about belief in the proposition. I just tried to put it with a simple example. So a leader has to believe in the proposition, whatever you are doing. You are teaching artificial intelligence. You believe in the proposition that artificial intelligence works for the benefit of mankind. It works for the benefit of the practice. And if you are not convinced about the proposition, you will not be able to perform. Your department, your team that you are leading. So first suggestion is about belief in uh, the proposition. The second aspect about the leadership is believe in himself. You know, believe in self. I mean, all of us come with different kind of capabilities. Some can do this, some can do that. But the leader must know that, okay, whatever it is, I believe I can do it. And the people produce wonderful, this uh, God has given us enough strength by way of our mind, by way of our resolve to solve any kind of a problem. You lose it only when you lose the self-belief. No, I cannot do it. It's only meant for IITs and NITs or central universities, you know. So it, there is a belief system which has to come in yourself. If somebody else can do it, you can do it. The second one is the belief in yourself, in your capabilities. And very importantly, it is about the third belief that I will talk about is belief in your team. And Sir talked about that and this, this theme is uh, of the FDP is about team building. You have to believe in team. Many times I find some leaders criticizing their own team members. 
that is the last thing you should do i always when i join any place i tell them that that i have landed up here so uh, forgive me the central university of haryana but for me the best university is ups i believe in my team the best faculty are here the best students are here the best staff is here you know i celebrate my team i believe in my team and if you believe in your team you can produce results like kapil dev could produce i mean cricket is a religion in this country so i can cite that example the time when kapil dev team beat west indies the mighty west indies in 1983 all the people on the call will recall that other than sunil gavaskar there was not even a single world figure in the team and west indies had the best of the best of all times the best two openers of all times desmond haynes and gordon greenwich the best four fast bowlers the best batsmen in form of clive lloyd fever richards you know just think of best batsman best wicket keeper everything the best they had it and this kapil dev's team uh, could beat that mighty west indies it has been primarily because of his belief in the team so i've heard several interviews whether it was kapil dev's interview or whether it was balvinder sandhu's interview or mohinder ramana's interview every one of them said that all of them believed in each other and look at what the indian team of today is doing in cricket you know just because we believe it look at what we have done as a nation in ma- managing this pandemic is all because of teamwork first time i think as a nation we have respected our police we have respected our medical fraternity we have respected teachers because whatever happened we all did not budge after all the education continued children have got their degrees they have got their education this is teamwork and this is actually belief in the team so my first suggestion is about belief believe in the proposition call it vision mission whatever it is believe in yourself that you are the gift of god you know to yourself and sent with a purpose and third one is of course believe in your team you can a leader is nothing without the team and sir mentioned that it's all about teamwork so and everyone counts it's not just the professor or the you know even the lab assistant the store keep everybody counts one of them doesn't do the work we cannot create the magic so having said uh, shared my thoughts on the belief the next uh, important aspect i would talk about is about determination determination is not the word which is only meant for defense or you know people like that determination is required in every walk of life i think the best determination is showed by all the mothers you know whatever happens the mother's determination never shies you know she will feed the child she will take care of the child come what may you know that's the kind of determination that i am talking about so undeterred determination is one the determination one is to produce results you know we have to produce results you know so it's not only the washington accord which told us that we should shift to outcome based education before that we were always focusing on inputs how many classes we took how many number of hours we have taken faculty loading this and that very good all that is of course required but importance is outcome based education is talking about the results so today we are expected by all the quality provisions that we should be once we have defined a po or a co we should be able to prove the outcomes you know systematically through data through analysis and if we are not doing it then it is not a job being done so as a leader it's our responsibility whether you are at hod level at dean level or at our vice chancellor level and subsequently some of you will rise to the ministry as ugc chairman and all that it has to be outcome based so we have to produce results without any excuses this nation has set up the models we have been the leaders of the world in nalanda and takshila and therefore come what may there is no and after all we have produced results you know people did not think that we can do in the online mode with power outages with network problems the people coming from such small small places we did it we did it all because we were committed to producing results it was that the education has to be provided and the students have to be certified and they have to be given their degrees and diplomas so producing results is the determination is number one second one is to solve problems and here i would say that we are determined to solve problems i have requested all my faculty colleagues here at ups that i will not be impressed though of course i will appreciate if it is just fundamental research research has to be such that it 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 serves the society 
So all my faculty colleagues, I have requested them, please get involved. Just, just I, I was sitting with my uh, one of my faculty to say as to there is a problem in the hills that we are constructing the way we are constructing roads. As civil engineers, we think about the various civil engineering parameters when we construct dams. We did not think that there will be a glacier which will melt, unfortunately, that too in the month of January and take the whole dam away, which means it goes beyond that we need to think about it. So problem solving approach is then another determination. Whatever is the problem we will solve, whether it is environment, energy, technology, society, people development, whatever. So the second determination is to determine to solve problems. We solve problems as teachers, our students will be problem solvers. The nation needs problem solvers. You know, Not to say that I did this, I did that. The cake of the pudding is in eating. And final part of determination is not to give up. As Suril Gavaskar says, uh, forgive me my examples coming from cricket because the, we just beat the English, uh, the English team in England. So we are very proud, all of us. He says, uh, don't give up till the last ball is bowled. Anything can change. And therefore, we have to have this determination not to give up, not to give up under any, whether we are conducting research, developing new programs, setting up a new facility, funds have not come, approvals have not come, is that don't give up. Something, you know, if, if the intentions are right, the results do come, sometimes early, sometimes late. So the three parts of determination I shared with the August colleagues here on the call is one is about producing, determined to produce results, determined to solve problems, and determined not to give up. The third set of my uh, thoughts on leadership is about inclusivity. A leadership is all about inclusivity. You know, a leader is not alone. Leader is, is working in a complete microcosm. So therefore, the first and foremost inclusivity is about people. Everybody counts. You know, you've got to grow people. You've got to develop people. As a leader, unless you as a dean have created 10 more deans, 10 more HODs, 10 more world-class researchers, you have not done your job. So therefore, inclusivity of people of all sorts and at every level, because every level counts, whether it is lab assistants, storekeepers, admin staff, and of course, we are in the, in the, in the business of building people as we build these students. So it's about motivating, believing. If you believe in your people, you will motivate them and you will include them in everything, include them in decisions. Uh, the best part is these millennials, these youngsters, are the are wonderful set of people. I respect all my students and I tell them, I respect you because uh, Tankeshwar sir will agree with me when we were growing and we were in small classes, you know, in the early 60s. At that point of time, we were called citizens of the third world. Underdeveloped nation. Nobody used to take us seriously. We could not grow our own food grains. 60s. And look at the youngsters today. They are going to be citizens of the top four economy in the world. They already are. In next 10 years time, they will be citizens of the top two economy in the world, China and India. We are ahead of you in the United States. So they are the people who can think like the millennials. The good, good, good part is that our youngsters are thinking differently. You look at the performance that is coming everywhere and in all the fields. So therefore, I think it is our duty to develop these people, include everybody, and everybody has to be developed. Every cadre has to be developed. The second is about inclus inclusivity is about environment. Dr. Mashalka says that, uh, you know, always he quotes uh, Gandhiji, who used to say that uh, we have not uh, borrowed this environment from our ancestors, but we have got it on loan from our future generations. It's our responsibility that we become sustainable. And again, I will come back to my own childhood and sir will agree with me. Today we are talking about single-use plastics. Today we are talking about sustainability. That's the way I grew up as a child. There was no plastic those days. I used to carry a cotton thala. And look at the reuse and recycling part of it. It used to be the pillow cover, which used to become the thala which used to become a duster, which used to become a potha, and then it would be burnt. 
you know, so the five cycles uh, is something that we had been doing. Somewhere down the road, we just got perhaps too much induced by the Western thought of consumerism. No criticism to that. Uh, but I think this whole thought of environment that we need to preserve environment, let's not be wasteful. And uh, we are doing everything possible. And I'm sure all good institutions, I'm sure Central University also would be doing that. Uh, but I think it is just we need to remind us again and again. I've already told my people here that today we are generating 12% of our uh, lighting load. I've told them in next two years' time, we have to do about 25 to 30%. We have to generate our own electricity, you know, waste uh, disposal systems, water table upgrading. I am working a lot with my faculty colleagues here to ensure that because these are hills, the water runs away, the water table is depleting. We are doing water harvesting and trying to do it again and again. And I involve all the young dear students in that because these are the future citizens of this nation. They have to grow with this whole thought of including the environment in their thoughts. And the third part, which I get uh, moved on now as I'm seeing things around is including peace, Santosh in your day to day life. The whole problem in the world is coming because of lack of peace, peace with yourself, peace with your uh, fellow beings, peers, peace with your organization, society, nation. And that's why if, if we are at peace, then rest, everything will get solved. So leadership is about including, including people, including environment, and ensuring that there is peace uh, in, the, in the world. And the best way is to do it through education and which we are all doing. So much for, of course, my collective experience and trying to summarize them into these three categories of belief, determination, and inclusivity as far as the leadership thing is concerned. Now, coming to uh, some, uh, uh, some thoughts on academic leadership. For an academic leader, the most important thing, this is of course true of uh, leading corporates and other organizations, is thought leadership. New ways, uh, innovative ways, is all about philosophy, the way you will now start challenging. Thanks to NEP, a lot of uh, time-tested, time-established uh, practices are now being challenged. I am like I would uh, like to imagine, and it's already happening. All of us on this call do understand that uh, three, four years down the line, the significance of degrees may vanish. NEP is already talking about academic credit banks, which means students today who are registering to programs will actually be only registering to courses. Further still, they will register courses. The, there is a course which is taught so well, and there is a record about it in Central University at Haryana. Then students will like to do that course from you. There is a course which is being done good in the, you know soil testing at IIT Roorkee. Students would like to do it from there. And the good part is that the NEP is creating provisions and I, as I'm given to understand, I was in UGC about a week back, uh, and I'm given to understand that things are at a very advanced stage of rolling out instructions and guidelines on academic credit banks. Some of them have already started trickling in. It's a, it's a journey, but I think just imagine the situation tomorrow. A student can pick up credits from anywhere, assemble all these credits, and which will, done in a particular manner, will result either into a diploma or a degree. And then this digi locker that we are talking about will become more of a reality. And therefore, this thought leadership about now, rather than thinking of departments and programs, we'll have to think about skills and courses. That's the thought leadership that I'm talking about, which we have to keep on continuously thinking as leaders. The second aspect is about pedagogic leadership. It is not just one corona which forced us to do classes online, then even do practicals online in some kind of a hybrid mode. But I think this pedagogic whole aspect is going to change. Whatever students can learn, we need not teach them. In an asynchronous mode, they will learn any which way. Whether they are learning from a software, from a simulation, and also from anywhere, they can even test it themselves. So now that means from the aspect of, you know, we are quietly moving away or we are forced to move away from T1, T2, midterm, final exam, summative evaluations to continuous evaluations. The whole thing in pedagogy will change and has to change. And it's about time we as leaders seriously think about it and change. 
the third aspect is of the leadership is to create that impact whatever we do there has to be an impact and i would like to quote here that uh, of course as i mentioned that we are trying to work with the government of uttarakhand we are trying to make difference uh, to the life here in whichever way we can uh, other day i was with the chief minister i shared with him that one of the faculty actually has found uh, uh, it is not yet commercial but yes in the lab methods a method to convert by reverse process from plastic to petrol or plastic to fuel so we have tested out now uh, we are in the second stage of testing the calorific value etc and how well it will is so i'm uh, we are testing it but as we were doing it we got a uh, uh, inquiry from uk one of the firms saying that good you are doing it from plastic can you also think of doing it from pp kits Now imagine these PP kids. The corona is there to stay for I don't know how long, and the corona leaves something, some other thing may come. So all these hazardous waste, which are plastic oriented, which have got a content that could be reversed back to their creation, which is they come from the outs, from the refuges of petrol. Then we can can we convert this, and we are working at that. That is the kind of impact I am talking about. Whatever we do, unless it impacts society, then it is of no use. we will keep doing fundamental research they will keep happening after all it is the incremental research which makes difference to the society about 90% in my own view breakthrough researches happen only about 2% of the time and therefore we have to start finding methods that we impact the practice the society the region that we are working for uh, is something that we need to do so that's about academic leadership thought leadership pedagogic leadership and leadership on creating that impact so brings me to the final before i can of course uh, sum up and then maybe if there are some questions i can take it for some time unfortunately i got this invitation a little too late yesterday and uh, there are certain commitments i had made that i would have liked to spend much more time with the august faculty colleagues who are on the call today but obviously maybe for some other occasion next time uh, on the academic leadership basically i would recommend three things first and foremost thing about leadership is to focus on the core the core is all about ensuring that the teaching learning happens of high quality i keep giving this crude example mithai wale ki dukan should be known for the barfi he creates not for the sign board not for the furniture not for that executive sitting at the counter we as educational institutions have to focus on core high quality of teaching learning experience so let us focus on core on and uh, in ensuring that we continuously keep on improving our own standards and i had been actually fortunate to learn from such uh, teachers my guru dr fatak from iit bombay uh, he has got this practice uh, now of course he doesn't take sessions anymore he is devoting his time for uh, you know more in the school education but that point of time i remember since i was doing mtech under him so one fine day his uh, wife said that uh, if you are free can you come and help me with something i said sure ma'am so i went there and i said yes madam what can i do i thought she will ask me to bring something from somewhere she said i am burning some papers so you please help me tear it and put it in the uh, tray where the papers are being burned i said okay madam so i started doing it with him. then i found that one paper which i tore was the notes which dr fatak used to teach me in the last semester I asked madam madam is there a mistake i think we are burning his notes she is saying you don't know he burns his notes every year and recreates them before the semester now that's the kind of and he told me that he said you never live on these kind of things you know you don't change things so so uh, let us focus on that kind of core which is creating that kind of a teaching learning experience the second one is about the core on the support of academics which is to me research patenting publishing taking consi- consulting projects they are extremely important they they are the ones which will help us impact the people keep talking about cliche statement that in india it is the industry which leads academia in the west it is the academia which leads industry i mean they create unix in uh, uc berkeley and then unix is taken by uh, the industry and then it is made prototype everything happens like that in states i think we have all the capabilities 
we have all the capabilities amongst our faculty and therefore it's about time that in india also we lead the industry by our research uh, applied research which makes a difference here and now by the concerned patenting there are a lot of problems to be solved uh, i'm trying to solve the problem of improving calcium content here uh, in dehradun where we have an issue when i was a vice chancellor at kaziranga university i was working with my faculty colleagues in trying to find uh, economic and efficient methods of uh, removing ferrous from the brahmaputra water i mean talk about it there are enough problems to be solved and let us start making a difference through by our research patenting and by project work and finally of course is the impact unless our work starts impacting society uh, we are of course in the business of spreading education uh, participate in not only in formal education but education educating the society at large i combined with the villages around i combined with the society here in dehradun in trying to uh, help them in trying to learn whatever it is and i think then only the academic leadership will get established so three things i i talked about the academic leadership my ideas uh, which is suggestion to all of you is one is be the leaders in core you know in your own way whichever you know all of us can not become masters of everything but something which is picked up they should say you want to learn about uh, enzyme treatment you go to this particular university at this particular college and things like that uh, support through research and patenting and of course in whatever we do i am a big promisor of creating impact to the society uh, otherwise that research and this knowledge is of futile if it is not working for the society uh, these were few of my ideas uh, as far as academic leadership is concerned and of course the best way to do it my suggestion is that let us take these uh, with all the criticisms kept aside take the accreditations and rankings seriously Uh, i myself have served on board of uh, general council of nba for 3 years uh, not 3 years 5 years from uh, 2014 to 2019 and uh, it was in my sir term when i was serving that the washington accord was signed by us uh, there are things improving i think if we go for quality certifications so let's take very seriously about nba nirf and nac these are not to be taken as bureaucratic exercises or exercises to get into some kind of publicity material but i think these actually force you to attain that kind of a quality so i will urge all the leaders to start to really very seriously and sincerely think about the uh, the the rankings and accreditations is 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 what i would suggest that we must make it on documentation uh, we generally are Uh, not documenting the best way of documentation is not just to prove it to somebody that we are doing outcome based education but also to serve as a base document for improvement next year use of technology i would suggest that let us totally remove ourselves from manual systems to totally online systems more use of apps more use of technology in our designing uh, curriculum implementing curriculum evaluations more and more of continuous and self learning kind of a situation using technology the three things accreditations rankings uh you're thinking of using technology in everything that we do is what i am suggesting so these are few of my thoughts in my uh, journey of academics from 2001 till date about 20 years now uh, that i wanted to share thank you very much for this patient uh, uh, hearing uh, i will once again thank the central university of haryana the vice chancellor and all the organizers to give me this opportunity i thank all the faculty colleagues who have allowed me this opportunity to interact with you i am always available for any kind of interaction thank you very much and now if there are some questions maybe we can take it if that is the design for maybe 5 uh, 10 minutes thank you very much thank you sir i ask participants if they have any doubt they can ask any participant who want to say something i am just seeing one thing in the chat somebody has commented that uh, wish we could all go back to basics once again and move away from consumerism i uphold that thought very strongly and i think yes i am not against consumerism as a management teacher i had been selling that to my students and i had been maintaining in all my talks then about you know how local consumption is the surest way of economic development 
and when you're talking about it, you're actually talking of in increasing consumerism. But consumerism leading to wastefulness and leading to challenging environment is the last thing that we should allow it to happen. Any other participant? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, uh, please. Myself, I'm Chandrasekhar speaking to you, sir. Sir. I want to you to explain about sustainable development and uh, empowerment technology. Because uh, technology has uh, given us something bad. That is uh, pollution and uh, water, uh, the pollution and uh, so many problems. Things have created a mess. And all these things, how to resolve it? In the future, what should be the temperament of the students as well as faculty? Because uh, we are going, sometimes we are going against as we are thinking we are modern and we are wanting to give new words and thereby we are which is creating a hell and, uh, how to uh, bridge all right okay fine so there are two comments that i make on your question it's a very good question uh, that you have asked so first one is about technology has given us methods by which these bad things are happening Actually, technology is not bad. It is the use of technology which is bad. You know, technology gave this nuclear energy. We could have used it for, uh, you know, very important. Let us say, even if we are using it for blasting, then we can do the blasting between an underfed river with the overfed river and connect the two rivers through those selective systematic nuclear blasts that the two rivers get connected and both the regions have got water. Now, this is how this is the use that we as teachers should be exposing our students to and, you know, uh, trying to, because teachers are the biggest influence on the students, as all of you will agree. And therefore, it is, the technology is not bad. It is the implementation of the technology. And the implementation of technology happens from the mind. And that's where we need the conditioning. And it always starts with me. So sustainable development starts with me. With me means with I. So am I pulling the car and coming? So I'm reducing the petrol consumption to one fourth. You know, I will bring my car today. Three or four of us are coming tomorrow. You bring. So at least we have reduced the pollution contained by one fourth to one fourth by three fourth. About wasting of water. You know, every time you go, this there was somebody uh, from Manorachna University is the promoter. He was sharing with me. Uh, they have a lot of schools, and he was sharing with me that uh, he has told children not to throw away the water, which is there in the water bottle. Now, just imagine, every child goes to the water point, and water bottle mein aadha pani bhara hua hai, they throw that, and then fill it up again. That means you're wasting about 50-60% of potable water. Like this, if you just consume, I have told here in my university, and I do it first myself, before I walk off, I actually ensure that all the lights and everything is off. And I have now there is a concept of pink slips. That includes me. I said, if my light is on and I'm not inside, please leave a pink slips. Three, three pink slips, you will have to have a cup of tea with me. You can understand what I mean. All right. So therefore, uh, it is all starting with uh, our own mind. And so I think sustainability is basically a way of life. It's a philosophy. And that's what I was trying to tell you by the example, that our forefathers, for them, today we are talking about reusability and sustainability. They were the only way of life they knew was that. So the complete recycling would take place, no wasteful, and uh, therefore the resources were uh, conserved. So sustainable development is a, is a practice, and it has to come by way of life. And we should, it cannot happen by teaching a three-credit course on sustainability, though of course, we need to exp uh, expose students to the good principles. I also see some comment that somebody has been teaching environmental. Uh, see, these are a matter of dharma. These are a matter of self-discipline. You know, and everybody becomes self-disciplined, then you will ensure that other first person doesn't. Somebody is wasting, then you tell him, please don't. You know, and so it is a thought collectively. Sustainability is all about thought. It's all about thinking. There is enough technology, enough ways. I mean, we can talk of today, there is a proper computerized way of uh, lighting systems. You know, in all the modern buildings, uh, the lights switch on only when you enter. The moment you leave the place, the lights are off. So there are there are ways of coming. The 
the the construction material are coming such that they are heat resistance or external heat is not allowed and so on and so forth so there is technology is enough i think what is not what is missing is the thought and therefore we have to actually keep telling ourselves that we will think sustainable act sustainable technology and support for sustainability already exist and of course things will keep on improving as we go by yeah thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank you i i, I hope i have answered your uh, question yeah yeah i recall uh, one incident that uh, in uh, anna university somebody had uh, produced a plastic loads okay using the plastics which are waste and he had converted to increase the durability of uh, life of loads and uh, that has become a concept in the world. Uh, all the mm -hmm. nations are adopting and uh, he had got the patent ship also the one thing that uh, you have said that from plastics we can create the energy that is fuel Yes. A nice concept sir thank you very much thank, thank you sir thank you any other participant so if anyone look yeah somebody is writing plastic ban in our country i mentioned this see revolutions uh, i believe friends uh, do not come by uh, legislation or by regulation they come more by see basically uh, the good practices are something which you learn from your yourself your family your friends the government will keep on issuing instructions every time instructions are issued that there will be no plastic so in bombay it happened that uh, on one particular day it is said that from today onwards plastic is totally banned so you go to any shop that fellow will not give you plastic thali right and then of course you don't know what to do then you wait there for 5 10 minutes he will say thoda piche se aana and then he will give you a plastic thali so that you can go back now in the first place why blame that person why did you not carry a thali with yourself i mean I'm, as child we used to always carry a a bag with us before when we go to shop so you please start carrying a bag make these small bags and they can even be folded and come in your pocket so start with you no no regulation on banning you put a fine i mean in delhi there are fine on not putting mask so people keep on looking for the police wala coming closer to the turn where you see police wala put on the mask as soon as the turn is over put off the mask so unless otherwise i am concerned that i will not leave or take off the mask because it is not only danger to me but danger to somebody else uh, it will not happen so i think it all starts with me no amount of legislation there is of course a ban there is already a regulation supreme no, court has come up with instructions on it okay. okay so i think i i believe in uh, uh, doing these things through a way of life rather than through regulation sir one more question last that what is professional leadership university courses in us and in europe and career options someone is asking professional leadership courses in us and europe yes sir yeah so i mean uh, th there are uh, good management institutions like harvard stanford kellogg's uh, uh, back there in uk is london school of business in cad in france they do uh, excellent after harvard's program uh, so also is, uh, kick, uh, the program which is by stanford these are considered as one of the fine programs in leadership but uh, that is all because they are branded it's not that we do not have good leadership programs here i think back home in india tata institute of social sciences actually does a good program in leadership there are several other universities who are doing program in leadership but i think to me uh, friends the leadership more than the program comes by practice so we have a good, we have a good uh, degree backing already with us uh, most of the colleagues here must be phd's or earning phd's so you are already at a level of learning you are already certified 
Now display this leadership through your actions. I mean, you create a kind of a framework and that framework becomes universally acceptable and being known after your name, you have become a leader in yourself. There are several programs. I think the best ones from, from marketability point of view and a brand point of view, there are, these are the names I sold, Stanford, Harvard, uh, Case Western of Kellogg's, and London School of Business and INSEAD in France, as far as Europe and the US is concerned. Opportunities after this, once you get branded, you have a sellable degree, then obviously, yes, you fish for your chances and uh, uh, things are available. But having said that, and I would like to think that the opportunities and the things are here, you know, in India. So I'm not saying don't go there. Because uh, I would like to share with you that there are several people who get in touch with me that they want to come back and join me as faculty. At one fifth of the emoluments that they are getting wherever they are getting. And I already have few colleagues who have joined me here from states, from uh, Europe, who actually wanted to come because there is some kind of a comprehensiveness and completeness that this land provides. That is no substitute to it. Some material benefits, we can't match them as yet. As yet. Wait for 2035, you know, they will be all coming back here. So now you have the opportunity, you are in the leading nation in the world going to be. Make things big here. Make things big here is what will be my suggestion. And let the Harvards come to us. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Central University of Haryana. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion of session three of day two, day three of online Atal Academy online faculty development program on leadership and teamwork for education excellence. I own the behalf of organizing team and entire fraternity of educationists and on my own personal behalf, extend a heartly welcome and vote of thanks to the speaker for his presence on this occasion. At the outset, I place on record my sincere gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central University of Haryana, Professor Tankeshwar Kumar for providing his valuable guidance, direction and encouragement. Now I register my profuse thank to Professor Sunil Rai, Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Petroleum and Engineering Studies for accepting our invitation and give a thoughtful talk on leadership development. Today, we had an opportunity to hear you, your thoughts on various aspects of leadership, and this will surely help us in becoming effective leaders in future. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path in this direction. Thank you for your enlightening speech and your excellent talk, sir. We are very grateful for you to you for sparing time from your busy schedule. And thank you for joining us on this occasion. Thank you very much, Jai Hind. Thank you very much, Jai Hind. I request all the participants to switch on the camera so we can take a group photograph with the expert. Sir, all are not switching off the camera because most of them are dressed better than the keynote speaker. <laughs> so they don't want to embarrass me and the reason why, of course, they are not switching on their cameras. Sir, online, they have excuse <laughs> to sorry. Not, not switch on the camera. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, all right. No, but we keep telling our students to switch on, you know, so we must yes, all right. Yeah, okay, yes, all right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank God you, bless thank you very much for your time, sir.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do we have to wait or we can leave the meeting? Any idea? Because the host is not available. Sir, tomorrow same time, 9.30. Sir, Sorry, due to network issue, we are disconnected. Uh, we will be having a, another session at uh, around after 5 to 10 minutes on time management. So, we have 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, the next session will start. 